Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm inside the half bathroom here of my house on the main floor and we're going to be replacing this point of use hot water tank. This has been in service since 2017. Here we are in 2023 and the reason I'm going to be changing it out is for preventative maintenance because as you can see we're starting to get some rust points here on the overflow uh, pressure re relief valve here and also on the hot water output. It's starting to leak on top and you can see the corrosion stains here. I don't want to take a chance on this actually starting to leak so we are going to swap it out. All right, so the installation and also uninstallation of these hot water tanks are pretty easy. It's just the input cold line, which is actually your hot line, go, and then the output will, on the red side will go up to your faucet. And all I'm basically doing right now, because I want to inspect this tank before I put the new one in, is I've just bypassed it and put a half inch NPT to half inch NPT male to connect those two hoses together. There's no leaks, these are steel braided lines. Now I can remove the tank, disconnect the power, and take a look inside. All right, it's out of its little alcove there, and after a little bit of disinfecting and cleaning up, because, well, it is on the side of the toilet, what are you gonna do? There are guys that live in this house. We're now gonna take this tank and flip it upside down to drain the water out, and from there, we can put it up on the table and open up the where the heating element is and where the anode rod should be located. All right, I just got this on the table and the water's been drained out. You just flip it upside down and I'm not really encouraged by what I found because as this drained out, that's what was inside that tank. So that's a good chance that's part of the anode rod, if not all of it. I know we've had water main breaks in our area over the six year, almost six year lifespan of this. So there's likely sediment and also we changed the hot water tank in the house. There was likely sediment from there. It got stirred up and gotten here. But let's go and pull the heating element and see what it's like inside. So to get to the heating element on this, you just use a flathead screwdriver to pull off this little cover here. There's a Phillips head screw and this plastic gray cover piece will come off. It'll expose the control piece here. We want to remove these two Phillips head screws. Now you can see the incoming power here to the temperature controller. You have your earth ground, and then you have your two white wires going to the heating element. And what we're going to do is remove these two spade connectors, and I believe these are either 3 8 or 7 16 nuts. We'll take those off and the entire element should come out. All right, so it's actually 10 millimeter nuts that hold the heating element assembly in place which also has the anode rod and then the thermo well for the temperature probe here that goes back to the controller and what i did was i removed the pressure overflow valve here because it was leaking around here and as you can see there's some significant rust around the hot output here and what we're going to do is we're going to look inside i have this Teslong inspection camera and it has the ability to do video. It has the camera that goes straight on, and then there's also a camera that's 90 degrees from that. And what you guys are gonna see is basically carnage.
So as you can see, it's pretty messed up in there. And I don't know how well I can get a picture of that, but that long chain of rust has actually eaten through the metal part of the tank. And no matter how well I try to zoom in on it, it's got a little bit of light, but it's in bad shape. I thought I might be able to save it, but unfortunately the tank has been compromised, which explains why it's starting to rust and show signs of leaking, not only around here, but around the edge in the back here. Here's the heating element, and you can see there's still a lot of crust and crap on there. The bottom one here, if I could point it with my finger, this is the thermal well where the thermal couple goes for the temperature controller. And up above here, what's left of it is supposed to be the sacrificial anode rod. And the hot water tank, the electrolysis that naturally happens in an electric hot water tank should be attacking this anode rod before it starts attacking the tank itself. And these I found out after reading the manual, so this is definitely on me, is that this anode rod for these size two and a half gallons should be changed or at least inspected every two years and flushed once a year. And unfortunately, I have lacked on the maintenance for this particular hot water tank. It's been in service for nearly six years. It's never been flushed. It's never been checked or anything like that. So my fault. Hey guys, quick aside. So I did order a new unit. It should be here in a few days. But if you want to avoid what I'm dealing with right now, this is how you do it. I'll link into the warranty information for this model hot water tank in the description. But the gist of it is, in order to be in compliance with the warranty, they want to see, Bosch wants to see that you're actually doing the maintenance on the tank. If uh, I were to show them a picture of how this anode rod looked or lack thereof, I'm not going to get the warranty. But as long as you're keeping up with the maintenance. They want you to inspect the tank once a year. Take out the heating element, inspect the heat, the heating element and the anode rod, and replace the anode rod every two years or so. You might actually need to go and replace it even sooner because depending on the water table that you have in your particular area, you might actually have to replace it more often than say two years. You may have to replace it every year. Here in the Northeastern United States where I live, the water table is usually pretty high mineral content, so it's gonna to tend to wear out that anode rod faster. But I'm gonna definitely put that on my phone now as a reminder to do that once a year and inspect it, and maybe I'll get lucky for the next time. But that's the best advice I can give. But um, so let's go and get this new unit in and we'll get this back all put together. Here we are a few days later. UPS has dropped this off yesterday and it is the new tank I got from Amazon and the same model as the old one. This was $179.99 plus tax, shipping from Amazon, and the original one I paid $149.99 US dollars uh, back in 2017, so they have gone up in price a little bit. Hopefully we should get about the same amount of service life as we did the old one, but making sure that we change out that anode rod once a year, possibly two years, depending on how much corrosion I find. But let's get this out of the box and get it installed. Well, as you can see, it's pretty much the same. I'm covering this because I don't want the serial number to be blasted out on the internet. But the good thing is that it'll be an easy install. The pipes are all set up the same way. The only difference is that this valve is pointing to the left rather than to the right. And if you are wanting to install this on a wall, they also give you the wall bracket as well, but we won't need to do that. Here we are here in the bathroom and I went ahead and did a full cleaning of the bathroom, one, and two, I washed the floors. What we're going to do to install it is we got to shut off the hot water line. I'm going to remove that union coupler that I put on temporarily until the new tank came in. And it should be very straightforward. The supply line coming from the valve will go to the cold blue side, and then the other side will go to the faucet on the red hot side. We don't want to connect the power before we have a chance to turn the water on and let the tank fill up. The worst thing that you can do for one of these tanks is to turn it on without any water inside. This, I actually shut off the thermostat all the way to off, but when I took it out of the box, it was already set to ideal. So just be aware, you do not want to turn this on without water in it first. 
All right, installation is done. Now all we need to do is fill it up with water. To review, coming from the supply line, the shutoff valve goes into the cold blue side, and then the hot output will head up to the faucet. Now, what we wanna do is make sure this is all the way open. And what we need to do first before we turn on the power, which is currently unplugged, we want to fill this up with water. And you're gonna probably hear it go a little bouncy here as we open up the valve, but we gotta let it fill up and that way we can then turn on the power. It's two and a half gallons, so it's gonna take a little bit. You're gonna feel the air coming out of here. Now I would suggest removing the aerator, but I know there's no sediment in anything inside this new tank. So we're gonna let this fill up, and then we should get some water coming out of here. And that was actually pretty quick. Good. And what we wanna look for is any leaking around here. We have hot water coming in already. go turn it off slowly and then check for leaks I don't feel anything here nothing here this is the pressure overflow all right now we're gonna go and turn it on now this does have hot water in it from the line but I usually set this to ideal the light's not on because it's already hot water inside, but if I really wanted to get it hot, then the light would turn on. So it will probably turn off here in a few minutes, but I usually set it to ideal because I really don't want it to scald, but that's it guys. Now we have hot water on demand again. I want to show you guys one more thing. Before I installed it, I did take my test song inspection camera and I wanted to check out the inside and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in six months to or in thereabouts to see how well the inside of the tank looks because I am gonna go and be flushing this out at least once a year let's see what the inside looks like here is the picture that I took with the test long inspection camera you can see a brand new heating element here and then you can see the thermo well right below it and then right above it is the sacrificial anode rod. And this is the rod that I'm going to need to purchase a few extra because this is what is gonna protect the tank from eroding away too quickly. And then the second picture that I took here, it's maybe not the best here, but you could see the seam for where the two sides of the tank meet. And the inside, when I had a chance to look at it on the screen, at least, I don't know how well this picture is coming out, but you could see it's a, a shiny inside, which I believe is just a coating. There's a glass liner on the inside of the tank, and then the outside of the tank is just regular steel. And then eventually, as time goes on, the metal will corrode out and start to leak. So that's what you want to prevent with the replacement of that anode rod. I'll send this link down in the description below, but this is the anode rod replacement. It's $12.63 at the time of recording this video, plus shipping. Shipping would probably be about seven or eight dollars, but you could get a couple of these and keep it on hand. That way, when you flush out the tank once a year, you should be able to inspect it, make sure that it's not too overly corroded, and just simply replace it. Hopefully, that should prevent this failing within six years i mean i got lucky <laughs> to be honest i'm surprised that, that this thing didn't fail sooner but hey you know i'll take it and learn from the mistake i'm gonna end the video here guys thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel till the next project